That right there is Suarez Point on the island of Española here in the Galapagos Islands. It is one of my favorite places in the world, hands down. I love it. It's just covered in wildlife and a lot of different kinds of wildlife as well. So on today's episode, we're here for three hours, 6.30 in the morning until 9.30 in the morning. I want to capture as many different animals as I can. So yeah, that's the challenge for today. And to be honest, shouldn't be that hard. literally just got off the zodiacs and got a photo of my first animal as the second animal is watching me there's a sea lion that just popped out there's a mockingbird an espanola mockingbird endemic to this island as far as i know and uh yeah i think i got a photo i don't know if it's sharp because he's really busy there's also sally lightfoot crabs down here, but I think I'll photograph them later. Oh, good morning. <laughs> I effing love it here. Effing love it here. Okay, we still haven't left the island, and I think I see my Second photo, there's marine iguanas here. And on this island, they go like blue, green, and red. And they're everywhere. Um, there's two that are kind of posed quite cool. There's some lava rocks in front of them. I'm gonna use that lava rock as foreground blur. I'm wearing my camouflage socks today. You really don't need camouflage on the Galapagos because the animals just are not scared of you at all. <laughs> There's probably 10 different species of animals around us right now, but I'm photographing my third right now. There's a lava lizard right here. The female lava lizards have these red necks and red heads and are really beautiful, but it's not exactly a great photo, so um, I photographed her, but I think I'm gonna try to get another lava lizard later. So the photo I'm gonna show you right now might not be of this one, <laughs> but will be of a lava lizard. We still haven't gone 500 meters, and I think there's another photo of another animal. Hopefully it doesn't move. I believe that's a lava heron. There's a lava heron in a perfect position on the cliff with water in the background kind of sandwiched beneath these rocks in the distance. Right at eye level, so I don't even have to do any work. I'm gonna shoot f5.6 to try to give some separation. I think this is four or five, animal four or five. And there's probably four other animals around me that I haven't photographed yet, just because they're not the right shot. It's spoiled here. Excuse me. I think the challenge I should have made today was how many animals I can put in one photo because there's so many. We got swallowtail gulls here. They're beautiful with this red ring around their eyes. And there's also a Nazca booby right here nesting. I haven't photographed either, but I'm going to. Oh yeah. What are you doing in my camera? It's already scratched. Don't scratch it anymore. Look, no, don't scratch it. It's already scratched. Stop. Stop. Okay. 
Okay, I've got my swallowtail golf photo lined up, I think. I like a lot of negative space. That's partly because early in my days, I was trying to sell the photos to advertising uh, and newspaper and stuff like that, and they need place to put text. And I still like that style. It's a little bit more minimalist and it shows a little bit more depth. So with the swallowtail gull, he's out there on the water and I've got these rocks in the foreground and I can use those rocks as a frame and it should put all the focus on the gull and it'll create that depth. Your eye will go straight to the gull. Okay, I've got my Nazca booby photo lined up. I'm trying to do something a little bit different because, uh, you know, photos of just birds standing on rocks gets a little bit old. So I'm trying to get a little bit of detail. When these Nazca bo boobies stuff their beaks into their, into their bodies, I think they do it for warmth. Their eyes stick out and it makes a really nice detailed photo. So at F8, because we're really close to the, the bird and we want to get everything in focus, at F8, I'm putting the bird's eye in the very top of the frame and doing a bit of a detailed photo. I'm cheating now because I, I got a second Nazca booby photo, but I wanted to do something a little bit more minimalist. One of my goals of this trip was to minimalize, to do simpler photos. So I did this photo of a, a Nazca booby that I really liked and it was unsharp. So now I'm chasing them around, trying to find the same shot or similar shot. For this type of shot with this white sky, a white bird, you really have to overexpose your sensor probably by like two stops, maybe even more. And yeah, I think this bird will work if it stays still for me. Next photo, there's an oyster catcher in the rocks. It's not a great photo because it's kind of hidden. But it's another animal photo. So I think I'm up to like four or 500 <laughs> animals so far. And we're only halfway across this island. Okay, so we're up on the Albatross runway. It's so funny on this island in Suarez Point that the animals have like their zones and they kind of stick to it. So since this is my third time here, I know what zone we're coming into. And I just said to Jody, we're coming into Albatross territory. And sure enough, there's a couple off in the distance. Now, one thing I want to stress about wildlife photography is Learning animal behavior is so, so important to getting a good photo. And with these albatross, that's definitely the case. Because what they do is they practice this mating dance and they're just constantly in their pairs doing this dance. And each dance is unique to the animal. But if you sit there and watch enough, you can learn the dance yourself. Not that you want to copy it, but you can find the best moment in the dance to photograph. So there's a mating pair. They're quite a ways off in the distance, but they're doing their dance. I think today's video actually should have been minimalist wildlife photography because it seems like every photo I'm taking is that style. Um, the adult albatross are doing their dance, but they're kind of a little bit, I don't know, they're in an awkward position. And there's a baby or a juvenile albatross a little bit closer, but just poking his or her head up out of the rocks. And I think that's the photo from here, rather than the photo I planned on shooting. The only animals I need to get, or I think I want to get left on this island are Galapagos Hawk, Sally Lightfoot Crab, and a Sea Lion. And all of those should be back at the port, so we're going to keep walking. Morton, how many different animals do you think you photographed today? I don't know. Five, six, seven, I don't know. 
but only concentrated on the white birds mostly. I got some good minimalistic shot of them uh, with a white sky as a background that I'm really happy happy with. Jody, how many animals have you photographed? Like a thousand. Got another animal. Didn't expect to get here because I didn't know there was that many blue-footed boobies here. But there's some juvenile blue-footed boobies here. They don't have blue feet yet. They're gray-footed boobies. Trying to, again, create depth by getting just the, the bird's head above some of this shrubbery. It's not good light, but the Galapagos hawk decided to appear up on this rock here. Um, yeah, heavily backlit, but we've got another one of those minimalist photos with a big white sky. Now what do I got left? Sally Lightfoot Crab and Sea Lion. Let's head down to the beach. Okay, got my Sally Lightfoot crab, I think. One of the things you notice from all my photos is blurry foreground or just some sort of depth. I like to create depth. It's kind of what I, what I focus on with wildlife photography, especially when you don't have like 600 millimeter lenses or whatever. I like to use the width of the lens to create that that depth and that dimension and kind of lead the eye to the animal. So I think I did that with the crab. And now, last animal, sea lions. And let's take it to the next level. Let's find a baby. Okay, I didn't get my baby sea lion because apparently they've all left this beach. I probably should have shot them or photographed them when we first got here. But there will be baby sea lions on the next episode. We're heading to Gardner Bay, which is also on this island, and it's sea lion heaven. And this is the time of year that uh, the, there's a lot of babies. So yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. Stay subscribed. Give that notification bell a tap, tap, taparoo, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.